Hello, BookTube, and I hope everybody's had a good weekend. It's nearing the end of Sunday here in the UK, uh, but I thought I'd do a video. I One of my previous videos, I can't remember which one now, but I queried uh, that I showed some uh, gifts that I had, and they included some Blu-rays, and I... Um, and I asked if anybody would be interested in seeing uh, my my Blu-ray library or my well, I most of it is out here as Blu-rays at the moment. Uh, I've already done a DVD uh, collection uh, of what what's left of my DVDs. Uh, I did have a massive collection uh, once upon a time, uh, but because of out of work and that, I needed to eat and pay rent so I'd um, sold off a lot which many I can never replace now and I'm still waiting for them to re-release them in blu-ray fingers crossed for a lot of it anyway um, so there was um, uh, one or two I think uh, replies in the comments and I received a huge number of emails yeah less than five but that was enough <laughs> uh, I don't need an excuse uh, to talk about uh, film so uh, at least at least there'll be uh, two or three that will watch this, hopefully. And uh, I'm going to start out with my favorite label, uh, which is Masters of Cinema. It's on uh, Eureka Entertainment. I think that's the full name. Uh, they do an, a number of series. Uh, they started Masters of Cinema in 2004, but I think the first release wasn't until 2005. Um and I have that one here because it was a silent. And I, I have most, if not all, the silents that are still available, or at least on Blu-ray. I think I've got them all assembled here. I started the uh, uh, this video and I had a sort of uh, pile fell over and then I realized I was missing a few things. So I've restarted. And uh, yeah, so I'll go through the silent uh, ones and I will give, I won't, go to, into too much detail but i will give the spine numbers of them because they are numbered sequentially as i said they started uh they've got 206 they will have i should say in late february have 261 uh blu-ray releases or releases i think in titles um i think that includes the dvds too because they they have reissued many of them in blu-ray um, I need to look at that, but I know quite a few are out of print now. At least uh, a lot of the DVDs are out of print. So, uh, But I don't think they've reused the spying labels. But again, uh, that's something I, I will need to, to look at uh, because I know I'm, I'm still missing a few um, that I had sold that I had. But anyway, I, I do like it. It's my favorite um, um, label. Uh, well, Eureka is pretty good in general. They they started in two thousand fourteen with a classics one that that just they didn't think quite makes it into their Masters of Cinema series, uh, but they they started another series which is good too, uh, and and generally it's 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 that they they use the best uh, elements, uh, the best transfers, the best restorations at the time that they they're doing this. Uh, and they have generally, uh, well, they always have extras, but some of them are lacking a little bit. But for the most part, they are very good. They'll have a booklet uh, with with writing in it. It'll be essays, either current new essays or reprints of older essays, or which I particularly like is contemporary movie reviews uh, in periodicals, like more more detailed than this was a cracking film you know, uh, that go on for about a page or so. And I really, really enjoy those. Uh, also sometimes they'll have excerpts, uh, but, the, uh, of, of, of bigger works. Like if it's a director, then they might have a little section in there of, um, of, uh, of, you know, from, from their autobiography or whatever, or letters, um, you know, talking specifically about this given film. And, uh, they, um, what else? They're, 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 yeah, well, and, and also, too, the, the extras on the Blu-ray itself. For the most part, there are commentaries, and they are generally very good commentaries. They'll have extras, they'll have outtakes, they'll have sometimes uh, interviews with the director or actors, uh, if they can get a hold of them and put it, put it on there. Um, and... 
uh, they'll they'll put. A lot of times the radio, uh, if there was a radio uh, broadcast of, of this too, that's in general. They don't really do that for the silent, the radio broadcast ones, but uh, in general, because it, it's a bit, it's not just silence. It's uh, world cinema in, in itself where, where they consider great films. Uh, most, for the most part, they're pre-1970 um, but there are quite a few recently that they've been uh, putting newer ones and sometimes new releases. And they also have a whole line of what they consider are going to be classics of the future and uh, directors and films that are that are current films uh, that they put out. I don't bother with that too much, um, uh, but I do like the Masters of Cinema, so I don't just buy the the silent uh releases i buy other ones too they have american classic film noir westerns uh historical films um documentaries as well uh they'll put out and uh they'll do you know either uh non-english language and what i like too is they don't dub it they don't dub them which i can't stand i can't abide uh dubbed films have the title to, uh, uh, subtitle down at the bottom. Even the silence. If the inner titles were originally in German, Swedish, Japanese, whatever, have a sub subtitle. So you're actually watching the film as they would have watched it at the time. Uh, and that's that's a bit of a rarity for for silent films. Um, Kino and others generally they create new um, inner titles, and I. That's one of the things, but we'll get to Kino at a later date. You can see some of them here, actually, the keynotes. But anyway, uh, we'll, I've prattled on enough. Let's get to the silent films. And I'll try not to have a pile fall over again this time because it's a little difficult to... I got the piled here, there, and everywhere. And as I say, there's, there's no... I will mention the spine numbers, but there is no rhyme or reason to the order that I'm showing them. Um, and... Uh, the, the first one I'm going to show is City Girl by F.W. Murnau. That was uh, done in 1930. It's his last silent film. Uh, it was actually done with the soundtrack as well, as well as a silent. But the soundtrack, the sound version, doesn't exist anymore. Uh, and this was, I think, one of their first Blu-ray releases, actually. Uh, it was done on, on uh, DVD prior. And I bought this. That's headset's got the blue um, case, which they they got away from, uh, which I'm glad to say. Uh, and this is spine number uh, eight. And as I say, they all have booklets, and it's a nice little booklet. Um, you know, they 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 range from anywhere twenty five pages uh, to the stapled booklets to about sixty pages. Uh, and then there's perfect bound books that are over a hundred pages long, and we'll 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 see a few of those. Hopefully, I am okay there with that pile. Now we got D.W. Griffiths in Tolerance, and this is from 1916, and it's a two disc. Uh, is it Blu-ray? Both? Because um, there might be some extra extra. Yeah, supplements. So this is Blu-ray with supplements, like a lot of extras on it. It's got a booklet. And another thing that they do, which is kind of nice, the insert uh, for the for the case, they, they because they now have a clear case, you can see a picture. Sometimes a few of those you can reverse, and other companies uh, have, have done that as well. But the booklet uh, has uh, extra material in, I uh, guess, as I said at the top, uh, essays, um and whatnot and new new essays as well as old essays just fabulous stuff um don't think i mentioned the spine number spine number is uh 99 and this is thief of baghdad uh it's directed by raul walsh uh starring douglas fairbanks most people know this uh, this is a popular uh, american silent, uh, silent film uh it's 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 well directed and visually it's quite nice uh 1924 and uh spine number 98 you can find these blu-rays in other um regions like um uh, kino does a lot of this the same material 
Uh, sometimes the extras are different, uh, especially commentary. So sometimes it's nice to get both of them because if there are good extras on each of them. And sometimes the transfer is better on one or the other. Generally speaking, Masters of Cinema are going to be uh, the higher higher end ones, even even better than Criterion. But that's contentious, I know. But we'll 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 get to that when I get to my Criterion uh, releases. Uh, and then we got uh, the Golem, Der Golem, and it's a um, uh, spine number two hundred thirteen. And it's uh, Paul Wegner uh, and Carl Bose. This is from 1920. It's good German Expressionism. They did have a, a, a special edition of this uh, steelbook, which I missed. I didn't get. I missed that one, which would have been nice. I, I, would, I probably would have got it just for the aesthetic value. It's too expensive now. Uh, another director that I thir thoroughly like is Emil Yanning. Uh, well, this is Emil. Uh, uh, sorry, Emil Yannings is the actor, and he's in a lot of films. Uh, but this is um, Josef von Sternberg, and this is The Last Command, nineteen twenty-eight. Fabulous film, and it has um, William Powell in it as well, uh, which is which is really good. Uh, so if you're a Thin Man fan um, and other William Powell stuff, you might want to see a silent that he's in. He's playing a director. Um, it's 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 a film about a film being made, and a bit of other stuff uh, mixed in there. It's 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 a very good film. And as I say, it's 1928, spine number 146. And then we go back to F.W. Murnau. Uh, sorry, light just sort of wigged out there. So no, it'll be too dark. So let's set that up. There we go. Um, this is early Murnau, uh, five films, 1921 to 1925. Uh, it's by number 140 to 144. Uh, and it's got... Um, uh, they even put the names in, in uh, German or the original. Uh, we've got The Phantom, The Grand Duke's Finances, uh, The Last Laugh, and Tartuffe. Um, is that five? Yes, that was five. And uh, the 1925 to 19... Uh, 1921 to 1925. And it's uh, spine numbers 140 to 144. If I repeat myself sometimes, it's my, my brain fog. So I might repeat the uh, spine number twice. Or if I forget to, I might miss it. <laughs> so I'll try not to. Um, now we've got uh, uh, Vertov, uh, the man, uh, man with a movie camera. It's a fabulous Soviet montage film. And it's just, it's fabulous. Uh, this is from 19, well, it's most of his stuff, from 1924 uh, to 1934, but mostly the silent film uh, part. And this is by number 134. Now we get to, oh, I don't know where the second one is for this. Um, oh, well. well, we'll get to it. Uh, this is actually volume two. Early Universal uh, Silence, Universal uh, Pictures. So here's something that was a special edition um, with an O, what they call it an O case, the slip, the slip sleeve, uh, the sleeve that goes over. And that's limited to sometimes 2,000 copies. I'm not too fussed about it, but uh, when they have, a, they are putting out limited things now, which sort of irks me a little bit then, because sometimes we will get to that where they have extras, like the booklet's bigger, or there's a booklet with it. And everybody's doing it. BFI's doing that, and many of them are doing it. And it, it irks me because... It means you got to buy it immediately, and sometimes it's like, well, I'd like to wait a little bit, or I can't afford it now. But if you if you if you 
miss it, you lose it at times because once this goes out of print as the special edition, this being, I think it was because there was uh, three films on this. It was like uh, 18 pounds or something like that which is a good deal for three films. Uh, but anyway, uh, it'll it'll go to the secondary market and it'll, it could be 50 or 100 pounds uh, just for this little piece of cardboard, which I don't really care about. I'd be happy enough just to get the standard edition. But when you're missing the booklet and other things like that, that does matter, but it's not worth 100 pounds for a booklet. Uh, this has 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, the Calgary Stampede, and What Happened to Jones. And this is uh, spine number 253 to 255, so it's one of the newer ones. Um, and uh, they're, 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 they're from the uh, 1916 to 1926, these ones. This is volume two. Uh, and I think, well, I'm quite sure that uh, Kino has put out the 20,000 leagues at least, and maybe a couple of the others. Um, and they do, they, they do cross pollinate that way. But sometimes like if there's commentary on here, it'll be different commentary on, on Kino, as I said. Um, this is nice. Um, sounds like there's a disc that's loose. Yes. I think this is one of the ones that fell. Um, just to make sure that it's not damaged. No. Blu-rays are a little more hardy. Hardy than, um, oh, it's awful loose on there. Uh, Blu-rays are a little more hardy than DVDs are. Uh, this was a special edition, um, that I, I pre-ordered this several years ago. Um, and it's, uh, Metropolis from 1927 Fritz Lang. And this was with the latest edition, and it also has um, George A. Marauder's uh, colorized version with a rock soundtrack, which is kind of interesting. Um, uh, it's an interesting take on it, and some of the music is really good um, on there. Pat, there's a Pat Benatar uh, tune that I really like from it. Uh, but it's three limited edition, three-disc set. Uh, this was oversold in the sense of they they touted it as being it's going to be having all the uh, bells and whistles uh, of everything. And so everybody, including me, was hoping it would have all the other commentaries that have been done for Metropolis because there's about 10 or 15 of them uh, in various things. Uh, maybe not 10 or 15 commentaries, but a whole bunch of extras that were on different versions, uh, especially through... Um, uh, masters of cinema and it wasn't it was it didn't have all that so i was a bit perturbed with it uh so that's where they let down a little bit even though it is the best uh restoration and the most recent restoration uh with the original soundtrack as well with the, with the original music this is spine number 16 just have to be careful there uh, and then we get to Ernst Lubisch, Madame Duberry. Uh, this is one of his earlier films, uh, 1919. Um, and this is this is this is quite good. Ernst Lubisch, uh, he, he went to Hollywood and he was known mostly for his musicals, but he did a lot of good silence comedies, uh, but also dr dramatic uh, material. And this is uh, spine number 93. And Fritz Lang, another fabulous uh, director, um, with, you know, he did the, if I didn't mention it, Metropolis, but you probably already know that. Uh, this is Spies. Uh, this is 1928. If I'm seeing that correct, it's, uh, the light is a bit dim here. And it's, uh, they, they use the best uh, illustration. And it's a lot of these, the German ones, are from the F.W. Murnau Schiftung or whatever institute uh, in Germany uh, that um, where they have the original um, original uh, material. And if there are uh, uh, negatives for it or alternate takes and what whatnot, as much as possible, they, they do a huge lot of a lot of restoration. 
and uh, you know, not all of it comes out on 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 Masters of Cinema, and not all of it comes out immediately either. Uh, some of it in Germany, uh, but this this here has it says your optional alternate piano score by Neil Brand, uh, which um, he's a, a great um, he's he's English and he's a fabulous sign of film uh, accompanist. Um, and he plays well, he plays piano, but he also uh, has written scores for orchestral store scores for for material as well. And it says the original German uh, intertitles with optional English subtitles. That I like because I do not like, uh, I, I don't like um, um, dubbing uh, on things and especially on, on uh, I've already mentioned this, but I, I, li I like having the original uh, intertitles so you can see w the film as it was meant to be seen. And then you have the extras on it. Uh, this one really isn't uh, silent, so we'll keep that aside. Uh, ah, here we go. There's the uh, volume one of early Universal with uh, Skinner's dress suit, the Shield of Honor, and Shakedown. I I hope they do more of these. Uh, they're three they're three Blu-rays in each. Again, with this uh, slip sleeve or O case as they call it. Uh, and again, they all have booklets, uh, all these things. And this is spine number 250 to 252. Michael, uh, and this is 1924 by Carl Theodore Dreyer, uh, a, a uh, director I thoroughly enjoy and... I am determined to watch everything he's done. Not everything has been out on DVD. There's some I no longer have, but he's a fabulous director. This is, uh, it's based on a 1902 novel, but uh, it's scripted uh, by him and Fritz Lang's wife, Thea von Harbo. She did the script for, and, and novelization for a lot of the stuff, but for Metropolis and M, uh, that's uh, Fritz Lang's films. Um, but it also stars uh, another great director, uh, Benjamin Christensen, um, who did Haxan or Witchcraft Through the Ages. Witchcraft Through the Ages is usually the cut up, um, destroyed version of its uh, title, but Haxan uh, is fabulous. And he also acted in that as well. He played Satan. Um, but yeah, it's uh, this. This is this is a, a, a very great film. It's a lot of interiors, and you get to see some really really neat interior shots with this. And it's an early gay film as well, which which is uh, well for Weimar um, Germany that was okay, but uh, you know later that would have been banned, uh, or I'm sure it was by by the Nazis. Uh, now we spoke of Fritz Lang. Oh, the spine number is 183 for that. And I'm not sure if I did spies. Uh, spine number is 90. Uh, this is Woman in the Room, Moon, Woman, Woman in the Moon by Fritz Lang. Frau im Mood, in Mond, I guess it would be. Um, 1929, science fiction film, and it's very good. Uh, and it's spine number 91, and as usual, it's got the booklet and everything else uh, with extras. I'm not going to go through in, in detail all the extras, uh, but uh, they're there. You can look those up. Uh, there's enough information there. This is another Fritz Lang. It's a serial. Um, this is a steel book. This is one of their, their special edition ones. Uh, this is Dr. Mebuse. Uh, and this is from 1922. It's about three and a half hours long. It's a gangster type film, uh, but he's a super super villain, like uh, uh, I suppose you would say Moriarty in in some ways. Uh, but it's it's a fabulous film. It's a bit slow in places, but it's it's worth a watch. Uh, I've watched it a few times, and this is a nice uh, like steel book, which I kind of liked. Uh, this is Waxworks. A uh, film by Paul Lenny. And this has one of those uh, slip sleeves as well. And this is from 1924. 
Uh, it's it's got it, it's it's set in a wax museum, but uh, the, the, there's about two, or three or four stories that they go back and tell the stories from the the wax figures, uh, and it's it's very well made. Um, also, again, it's Weimar, so it's uh, and it's spine number two thirty nine. Let me just put a couple away here so I can get to the rest. And I'll have to lean forward. So let me get a few of these here and then we'll continue on. There we go. And this is a uh, film from late 20s. Uh, no, actually it's 1925, sorry. Uh, and it's uh, a Variety. Uh, film by E. A. Dupont. I think this is he's a German silent cinema, but it was done. No, it's not. Okay, it's it's another German silent film. Uh, I'm thinking of something else that was actually done in England, but I don't think this was. Uh, and it uh, stars uh, Emil Jannings and uh, Lila Deputy, and it's spine number one sixty. This has quite a substantial. Uh, booklet are a little bigger than than other ones, um, and yeah, I I missed saying that there's photos in these as well. See, this is forty some pages uh, long, and nineteen twenty five. Ah, here we go. Um, there's another special edition one, which changed very much so from. Um, and I'll show you what they look like later. This is volume three of Buster Keaton. And it's Go Go West, Our Hospitality in College. And it's probably number 224 to 226. And it's got a, it's a box set, they call it. But it's a slipcase like the... Um, like the... Uh, uh, Metropolis, and I like these a lot because they have a bigger booklet in, and I like I like the slipcase with it, and the booklet. Uh, it's not a huge booklet, but it's about sixty pages long, and the, then they when those sold out, which they sold out very quickly. This is volume three. I just got it at the tail end, and um, and I'll show you what happens to them once they become the standard edition. Hence, uh, it's nice to get the um, the special edition. And this is spine numbers 224 to 226, because there's three films in there. Then we got Nosferatu by F.W. Murnau, 1922. And uh, not much to be said about this. Max Schreck uh, is in it. Uh, and it's spine number 70. This came out as a special, uh, 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 a steel book as well, which I had missed. And then we got another Fritz Lang. It's Destiny. I'm not going to try to uh, say the German title. This is 1921, one of those early ones. Uh, and this is Spine 161. And Robert Wine's Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Another, this is a really good, this is, uh, you know, it's almost like a type of uh, the the original, not original, but uh, it's definitely uh, uh, always referred to uh, for uh, German expressionism uh, for film. And this is 1920. And it's got uh, Conrad Veidt in it. And it's spine number 92. And that had a... A uh, nice steel book too, which I'd missed, but I don't think anything else was different at that time with the uh, extras or the booklet. Then we got some more uh, Lubitsch in Berlin, fairy tales, melodramas, and sex comedies. Six films by Ernst Lubitsch, nineteen eighteen to nineteen twenty one, and the spine number is one seventy five to one eighty, and uh, see anything. Um, yeah, this is I Don't Want to Be a Man, 1918, The Doll, 1919, The Oyster Princess, 1919, uh, Sumerum, 1920, Anne Boleyn, 1920, and The Mountain Cat, 1921.
Uh, we got another Conrad Veidt. Uh, Orlock, the hands of Orlock. This is quite a it's sort of a horror type thing. Almost science fiction in a, in a sense because somebody gets their hands. They lose a pianist, uh, artist, um, loses his hands. And he gets, um, he gets from a dead corpse, uh, well, a corpse, obviously it's dead, uh, but he gets transplanted new hands, but they have a mind of their own. Um, so, and this again has the, uh, oh, they call it O case. And this is from 1924. Uh, and it's, uh, is it, uh, Lenny or Paul Lenny or Robert Wien? Uh, sort of have to check here now. Yeah, uh, Robert Ween, uh, same director as the uh, Dr. Caligari. Uh, 1924, as I say. Just looking here at the other um, extras. There's an alternate featuring alternate takes of certain scenes. Uh, with different uh, the diversion comparison featurette uh, collector's booklet featuring new essays by Philip Kent Kemp and Tim Lucas uh, Philip Kemp sure shows up quite a few on these and there are um, audio commentary on here uh, and there's uh, with uh, Stephen Jones and author Kim Newman um, has also uh, done a uh, or a part of the commentary. So yeah, so it's it's a it's a great film. Uh, let's see here, the Holy Mountain, the Lenny Riefenstahl uh, film directed by Dr. Arnold Fank. Uh, it's mountain climbing, but it's beautifully shot, just beautifully shot. If you can see some of the stills there, uh, they just and the other tinting, it's just fabulous. This is nineteen twenty six. And the spine number is 210. I'm not sure if I said spine number for Hands of Orlock, which was two, 249. One of the more recent ones. This is a nice set. This is reissued in Blu-ray, but I also have it in, in DVD, but this is a new restoration, and I got it very cheap. Um, so it's four-disc Blu-ray box set. It's under one... Um, um, spine number of 150 because they're all shorts. Whole list of shorts there, as you can see. And uh, a lot of them are Buster Keaton and and Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle. And it's got a, a fabulous booklet with it that's over a hundred page booklet. As you can see that this is this this is quality quality stuff. And as I say, it's a new, a bit of a new restoration as well, and transfers for that. We're getting near the end. Uh, oh, we're over half an hour. Okay, let's roll through these. The Son of the Sheik, um, and directed by George Fitzmorris. Uh, with Rudolph Valentino and Vilma Banky. This is a sequel to the Sh the Sheik. Uh, they have not done. The original the chic they've done this one and this is uh spine number 220 now i got diary of lost girl now this is great yeah filmed by gw pabst um and starring the lovely louise brooks and this is from 1929 and it's spine number 97 I've got another one I just remembered, uh, which I, I somewhere behind me, but I won't be able to find it. it you'll eventually see it. It's a G, another G.W. Paps late, uh, um, 1927, I think, called The uh, uh, Love of Jenny Nye. I've shown it already. but uh, And this was the first release that they did on uh, the Masters of Cinema series. This is spine number one. And this is Sunrise, A Song of Two Humans. Beautifully done. It's uh, Janet Gaynor and George O'Brien and F.W. Murnau's. And he did this while he was in Hollywood. But it is, it's always on the list of the best films of all time. It always is. And, okay, this, remember the uh, 
Buster Keaton one, the special, the slip case and the big booklet. There was for this one as well. This is volume two, I think. Um, yeah, this is volume two. And so this came out in the regular edition without the slipcase and a much, much toned down booklet. That's only now like 25 pages. So, but it's now close to a hundred pounds for the original one. And no, uh, as much as I want the booklet, it's not worth that much. I can, I can get the material a lot cheaper than that. The, that's in there probably, or, or similar material. And go back to that because I didn't say what the films were the navigator seven chances and battling butler and it's spine number 221 to 223 and this is volume one of it uh, again the same deal stripped down uh, booklet and uh, there is Sherlock jr 1924 the general 1926 and seaboat uh, bill jr 1928 and it's spine number 172 to 174. And a couple more left. The Man Who Laughs, again, Conrad Veidt. Paul Lenny film from 1928, based on the novel by um, uh, Victor Hugo. And again, this is one of the special editions with the O case. And spine number 236. And the last one, but not least, is F.W. Murnau's Faust. A Feast for the Eyes. Uh, this is like, every scene is like a, like, like a painting. And it's beautifully shot, beautifully lit. It's just gorgeous. It's a fabulous uh, uh, retelling of the Faust legend. And this is from 1926. And this has the uh, domestic version uh, that was done uh, for Germany. And then the it also has the um, export version that was sent to the rest of the world and there are differences uh, a lot of times it's just the sometimes it's just the camera that they had several cameras doing it so they had different negatives for a slightly different angle and then sometimes there's different scenes or you know different takes as well so that's number 78 so i hope you uh enjoyed that uh, if you have any questions about these films or anything else uh do sound out in the comments or send me an email which uh, my email will be in the description below and i hope everybody is going to have a good week and i will see you next time booktube